The Iron Twins Fortress, the newest addition to Raid Shadow Legends. Are you struggling to beat this dungeon? If you are, that's going to change today. What's going on team? It's your boy Murder Rank here. We're talking about Iron Twins Fortress. Now, I wanted to release this video a little bit earlier than now, but I need to make sure 100% that I did enough testing on this before I came out with this general guide that, like I said, no champions required. Now you might be thinking, Murder, what does that mean? No champions required. Do you just go in with zero champions and hit start and you automatically win? Of course not. This means that I'm going to give you the information you need to look at your specific account based on the champions you have available to you, and you're going to be able to clear any stage you want. Trust me. The only thing you could possibly be held back by is not having the proper synergies or not having the gear. If you have those two things, and they may sound like a huge deal, it's easy. This is going to cover hundreds of literally hundreds of champions so like i said if you can't get past a certain stage you've tried all of your other options it's simply a progression thing and you just have to wait until you're further progressed into the game to complete this dungeon smoothly so let's dive into it i'm going to show you an example run then i'm going to build a new team in front of you then i'm going to lay out the stats you're going to be aiming for so let's take a look at that run all right so as we can see here i am using duchess I'm using Stagnite, a Vogoth on the far right. We have a Husk here and we have a Grush the Mangler. Now, if you're thinking anything right now, just stop. You don't need Duchess. You don't need any of these five champions. Like I said, this is purely a concept piece that you can apply to your account that's going to cover a wide array of champions, literally hundreds. So this team, if I kind of told anybody this team, they would say, probably not a good team, right? Where's the damage coming from? The survivability is iffy at most. You have a reviver, your decreased speed isn't that consistent. It doesn't matter. So the first thing to notice here is what am I doing? What's the key to this hidden tech, right? The key is going to be use affinities to your advantage. This isn't going to be one team that can down every single stage 15 like that. Easy peasy, no problem. Unless your account's crazy, crazy endgame, it's not going to be like that. Or if you have a Geomancer, like I've already showed. But not everyone has that champion. And some people have that champion, but don't have the supports to constantly boost the Iron Twins turn meter, giving you those one minute stage 15 runs. I've already seen people struggling with it. So this is going to be that guy that's going to get you to that next level here. And if you do have a Geomancer, you can apply him to this and you're going to be flying absolutely flying so what are we doing here we have a reviver we have a healer which is going to be vogoth in this instance we have a second healer which is going to be grush grush also is in a toxic set for additional damage then we have stagnite attack down defense down but decreased speed is the main point here and then we have an equal affinity champion being husk here He's the main damage dealer. So all of this was carefully calculated, right? If you know how the Iron Twins works, he has a bunch of passives, giving you additional Iron Brand stacks. That's why people wipe, for no other reason besides the Iron Brand stacks. Because he doesn't do a ton of damage, you'll notice this once you first start the match, he hits like a wet noodle. It is what it is. If he's not hitting like a wet noodle, you're probably playing way higher than your account should be based on where your gear level currently is. So what you'll notice is by bringing strong affinity champions, he's going to start weak hitting a lot. He's not going to be applying as many iron brand debuffs onto your team. And in return, that's going to balance things out in case your team starts taking too long to get there. This is kind of a race against time boss, which is really cool here. So I don't really want to talk about that too much here. That doesn't have anything to do with the main concept. But the main goal here is going to be four champions. That's what I figured out. I tried three, two. I tried all five strong. It works the best with four champions that are strong affinity and one champion that is going to be the same affinity as the boss you're fighting. We will get to Void. 
I understand Void, there's no strong affinity. We're gonna get there. That's a whole separate thing that I'm gonna cover in this video, so don't worry. So like I was saying, four strong affinity champions, one even, not weak affinity, even affinity. So one champion, you want to die. That's the point here. Ideally, like I said, based on the passives, the highest attack champion, the highest defense champion, you want one of those champions being the equal affinity to lower your odds and RNG chances as much as you possibly can of those strong affinity carry champions dying. So as we can see, my run just ended here, four minutes and 15 seconds. I mean, nowhere near what Geomancer can do, but it is what it is. So the final recap is going to be 43,000 damage from Duchess, nothing, right? 421,000 from Vogoth, that's simply because he has Giant Slayer. Grush the Mangler doing 953,000, higher than Stagnant at 509,000 because he has the Toxic set, which I highly recommend for any support hybrids you're not really building damage on. Simply use the Mastery, War Master, Giant Slayer, whatever works for him, and then give him a Toxic set. That extra damage will help making these runs faster. And then Husk is my damage dealer. Is he an ideal damage dealer? No. Are there a thousand champions better than Husk? Yes. I wanted to make this challenging for myself to make sure this type of team works no matter what. Now, if you're bringing five champions that don't do damage, you're not going to complete this. So if that is the case for you, it's not going to work. You do need at least one heavy damage dealer. It's going to be lowering the health at a relatively decent pace. So you're not just getting tons of stacks regardless of the strong affinity here. So why do we pick Husk for red? The champion with the highest attack is going to be getting a ton of these stacks. So it might as well be the champion that has no chance of having a weak hit applied to them. And it gives Duchess a revive target where she can apply that continuous heal onto the team. So she can be using that revive and also placing buffs. If it's not Duchess, any other reviver, like I said, you do not need Duchess at all. I'm using her. She's technically not the best option for this another challenging aspect yes she gives me damage reduction in the aoe format yes all of his abilities are aoe however this is the key here if there is no decreased speed in the boss because stagnite like i said is not very consistent with decreased speed and we have to revive husk she is going to apply a buff to the whole team, which is going to boost the turn meter of the boss, and it's going to make it so Husk probably dies twice in a row. So, like I said, I picked pretty suboptimal champions for this, just to challenge myself and make sure this works, so I can let you guys know what the deal is here. So, as I said, damage dealer two survivability champions, and then decrease speed. That's all you need. Ideally, the perfect way to build this is going to be your reviving champion. The one that is strong affinity should have resistance. Now, there's going to be a version of this that I'm gonna show you when I build it for blue affinity, where you can bring a cleanser instead. Even if you bring a cleanser, I highly recommend, if you have the gear, to keep your reviver that is strong affinity with resistance. Why is that? Because you want to reduce any type of RNG you can, because like I said, this costs, well, the key's fine. You're never gonna lose the key, but it costs energy. You don't wanna be failing this. So if you get debuffed with defense down or weaken, that's really bad for this boss. You don't wanna gamble a weak hit. Like we saw from the clip, these champions can survive even if they aren't weak hit later on in the fight because I built them with certain thresholds of stats. But as soon as you add defense down, as soon as you add weaken, they will get one shot. So highly recommend building resistance on your revived champion based on whatever stage you're trying to tackle. Second thing is going to be all of the other champions, right? There's not much nuance to this. I already said if you have a champion like Grush that simply applied continuous heal, the occasional attack down when Stagnite, I mean, he's just there to support Stagnite synergy wise, reduce crit damage in case you get an unlucky crit, you're reducing the amount of damage you're getting from that crit. So it probably won't be a one shot. And we just wanted more damage out of Grush here to make things smooth and to kind of compensate for me picking Husk, which like I said already was a terrible idea. So. If you can and have the gear, try to throw one champion in toxic gear, preferably a champion that doesn't need accuracy. I kind of strained myself a little bit trying to build this guy because he does need accuracy for his other abilities. He has a leech as well, which is good. There's just like so much overhealing in this team. I definitely went 
a little bit excessive on that. It wasn't needed for sure. Now for Stagnite, decrease speed is the important part. Defense down, of course, and attack down are going to help in the long run, but not needed for sure. Then Vogoth, like I said, just a healer. Heals based on damage taken, and then Husk being that damage dealer. Now it's time to leave that clip, head into the game here to fine tune things to make sure you understand what I'm talking about 100% here. Pay no mind to the Bat Eater, it doesn't work. It works on stage one through four, but outside of that, it doesn't work. So now let's pretend the Iron Twins Fortress on stage 15 is going to be Magic Affinity, Blue Affinity. What do I want? Four champions that are Force, one champion that is going to be Magic Affinity as well. So we're going to head to our vault. We're going to click on this Buy Affinity button. We're going to include Master Vault reserve vault whatever works for you we're gonna pass all of the op void legendaries and we're gonna start looking at our champions here what are my options so the first thing i want to make sure is that i have decreased speed so quickly on first glance what am i going to do uh elder scar has it but i don't think it works on bosses okay so tannic state flower login reward everyone has it and provides I mean, not like Duchess, but will bring you some of that AOE damage mitigation for sure. And we have the decreased speed. Of course, this is depending on it being booked. Second part of this doesn't matter at all. You don't have to build crit rate because there's only one enemy in front of you. So this is going to be 100% chance. You do need accuracy. 3% still going to apply based on the stage you're going on. And then this is just going to add an additional heal to enemies with decreased speed. So Tainix first pick for sure. The next one we want is what? A revive champion. That's going to be Rector Draft for me. What else can I pick? Do I have any other revivers? Not outside of the vault at the moment. What about legendaries? Any legendary revivers? Okay, don't have any others there. Now, this is where things can kind of spread to whatever you want. If you have Geomancer, GG easy right this just became the easiest team you can probably just use these three champions alone but we're not going to do that we're not going to use geomancer because i've already made a geomancer video so the next thing we want to consider is how are we going to be cleansing the debuffs well first champion that comes to mind of course is going to be doom priest great cleanser insistent you want to turn off the a2 just in case there's a point where decreased speed falls off of the boss and doom priest gets a turn you don't want her boosting the turn meter if she doesn't have to since she does have an aoe buff you can also use someone like mausoleum mage here who has removing debuffs from the team healing them as well as placing block debuffs for a one turn duration so now that we have our three champions we have decrease speed reviver and a cleanser what are we going to do next completely up to you we do need some damage here and now we need a magic affinity champion and a force affinity champion here there is one other option if you have a very strong damage dealer on the strong affinity you can absolutely do that so there's not a ton for force here that i can see i mean okay so let's just i'm not even going to use geomancer because that's kind of productive so mountain king any hp based champion is going to destroy content like this the survivability is insane mountain king ignoring defense this guy's got a ton of defense he's gonna pump damage he's just gonna pump i've already tested rotos in this rotos carries like no other so this guy's gonna work for force so now what do we do with the magic affinity champion do we risk running double damage dealer if that does seem too risky to you if you've tested this and you've failed at all Put in a blue affinity or magic affinity reviver. You might be thinking, murder, that champion is going to be dying often. That is the point. So after I give you the stat threshold you're going to want to approach here, the fact that this champion is going to be dying first out of your entire team means that they're going to have the lowest iron brand stacks when you get to those later phases. This is where the role reversal is going to switch here if you are struggling keeping your team alive. So let's just find a reviver who we can, okay, Scylla Drakes, perfect. The decreased speed on Scylla Drakes isn't crazy, but there's already awesome synergy there between Syl as well as Tainix Hayflower. So now that we have this, Scylla Drakes not only has a revive, she also has an ally protect. So what is she going to do? Let's say we lose Doom Priest once we get to those 
harder phases where things start scaling and the damage starts ramping. She's going to revive, put ally protection on. If it stays and the boss gets another turn, Sill of Drakes is going to die. Doom Priest is going to survive, be able to cleanse. Rector Drath is then going to revive Sill of Drakes, and it's just going to be this continual cycle of all of this going on. Now, if we elected not to go this route, what we can do is we can use Ninja. Ninja's a pumper, everyone knows it, who's been using this guy. And if you don't wanna gamble with how geared your team is, you can of course swap out with someone like a Mountain King and see what else we're missing. We don't have a consistent attack down. Yes, Vector Draft does have the decrease attack on the A1, but it's 35, 40, 45, 50%. I mean, that's not terrible. To be honest, I thought it was gonna be a lot worse. So attack down, you can gamble with 50% or you can go with somebody else here. For example, Sepulchre Sentinel, definitely a viable option, or you can add even more healing and go with someone like a rear guard sergeant. Allied protection, continuous heal, attack down, defense down. Home run. This is a fantastic synergy champion you can add to the mix here. And what is it going to do? Increases force ally HP in all battles. So this is a slot where you could be looking for an aura champion. All of these things add up. This is why I said it's going to be very account specific here. If you want to copy a team that someone else has, you can absolutely do that. 99% of the time when people show you a pre-built team, it has a failure rate. Unless it's unkillable, then unkillable right that's the name of the game but when they show you a team even like the geomancer team i showed you if you don't build it properly and you missed any bit of information that i dropped in that video with geomancer you're going to be wiping over and over again i've already seen in the comments people saying you showed examples where the team was failing i'm looking for a team that's more consistent and they completely missed the part where i said I changed things to build these guys with masteries, have decreased speed land and changed up the comp to show you what can go wrong. For me to pick five champions and say, this is going to be the meta team, the amount of people that's going to apply to is insane. So saying free to play team, even free to play players don't have every rare, even free to play players do not have every single epic. So unless it's only login reward, and only, I mean, not even fusion. Fusions aren't technically free to play. Yes, you can be free to play, but if you're a new player, there's just no shot. Not that new players are doing stage 15, but you guys get my point. So this is going to be the breakdown of the team. This is the concept of the team and the team synergy. There's zero chance you fail if you follow this, right? If you're failing after applying this strategy and you're not on Void Affinity, we're not there yet, then your account is simply not at the level for the stage you're trying to complete. It's that simple. If you haven't found the team that someone else has made and this strategy isn't working for you, it is what it is. Get to grinding. This game is Raid Grind Legends, right? Shadow, okay, whatever. So with that being said, now it's time to get into like the important part. Well, I mean, this was pretty important, but the other important part of this video, which is the stats. What do we do here? Like I said, it's ideal if the even affinity champion, if it's not a reviver, has the highest attack. And if you want to be big brain and have the gear, after you meet the survivability thresholds that I'm about to talk about, build your reviver with high attack as well. Making sure the iron brands stay on that champion, they're getting the most stacks, and it's just going to be a lot easier for the rest of your team. So with that being said, what are we talking about here? I'm going to be using stage 15 as an example, and then we can kind of scale it down from there. So the first thing you need for any stage you're completing here, I'm just going to recommend it for every stage because it's just the right thing to do. 3000 defense. Yes, I know he has ignored defense skills, but once we get later on, he starts ramping up quite significantly and you want the maximum damage reduction for your team. So 3000 defense is the bare minimum, I would say, on any champion besides the equal affinity attacker. Now, I'm not going to tell you guys how to build the attacker 100% crit rate, crit damage, HP, defense, or attack based on the main set of that nuker, and you're good. If it's accuracy, make sure you're hitting the accuracy checks for this. There are plenty of resources where to find it for each and every single stage. So no need to go over the accuracy and resistance for there. But survivability is a huge part of this. So once again, the attack champions aside, 
What do you want for health? This is the most important thing because health is the greatest survivability stat in the entire game. If you are doing a stage 15 and stage 14, I do not recommend going below 60,000 health on a single champion. That's the bare minimum that I would do on any single champion you're bringing to this. Again, that isn't in the attacking role. Once you start getting below stage 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, probably up to, I mean, we'll stop at 8 here. This is where I'd recommend at least 45,000 health. Beyond that, it doesn't really matter. It's so easy to get health nowadays if you're far enough progressed into this game to be doing the Iron Twins at all. So outside of that, I wouldn't go below 30 to 35,000 health. But the main thing is for the higher stages, try not to drop below 60,000 health on any of your champions on top of 3,000 defense. Following those basic rules on top of any synergy we have, whether it's damage reduction from perfect fail, someone like a Duchess, or you're bringing attack down, or you have strength in, there are just so many different options here. So that's going to be the basis for that. Now, like I already mentioned, I highly recommend that the Strong Affinity Reviver has resistance and you can check the resistance stat. For stage 15, for example, I believe it's like 600. I just went with 600. It's what I had on my arena champion, so I used it and it worked perfectly. No debuffs were getting through. If it was, it was a 3% chance. I made sure of that because I rarely saw it. As far as accuracy goes, 550 for stage 15 is kind of the sweet spot. You can get away with lower as long as it's not decreased speed. You want to make sure you're maxing out the 3% chance if it's on a decreased speed champion. Now, the next thing that's going to be quite important is going to be speeds. What kind of speeds do you need? Now, in a perfect world, you would want to match whatever stage speed you're currently running with your champion. Is that going to be realistic for everybody? Absolutely not. I'm pretty sure it's 250 speed at the highest stage here. Why would I recommend so much speed when we're applying decreased speed here? So you're getting more turns. The more turns you get, the lower your iron brand stacks are going to be if they do get through the weak hits and the more opportunities you have to deal damage. So. Like I just said, I believe stage 15 is 250. So if you can get at least two champions, that would be ideal. The reviver and the decreased speed champion are the most important champions to have at a decent speed. So if you cannot pull this off with your gear, focus on two champions, prioritize your resistance reviver and the champion applying decreased speed and give them as much speed as you possibly can. Outside of that, do whatever you want. I ran a champion at 160 speed. Granted, we didn't see in the video. I'm pretty sure the Husk has 220 speed. So pretty decent for a nuker, but he didn't have very good at damage dealing gear. And the other champions were between 200 speed and 230 speed. So if I had to say what are minimum speed, now that I kind of gave you the, how to get as close to his base speed as possible, depending on the stage, Stage 12 to 15, minimum speed should be 200 to 210. Stages 11 to 8, once again, I would not go below 180 or 190 speed. And below that, it doesn't matter. I don't think anyone's really struggling with stage 7 and under. If you are, like I said, it's going to be a progression issue. Definitely not a champion issue because you can fly through those stages. They did not scale this up well at all. So with all the information, I know that was a lot of information. You're going to be golden. Now let's talk about Void Affinity. There's no option for the strong affinity play. This is going to be the hardest affinity, no matter what team you do, right? The only teams that won't struggle with this are Geomancer teams and Unkillable teams. Any other combination you can think of, while they may be successful, is going to have higher requirements than any other affinity, or it's going to have a lower success chance than of any other affinity. That's simply how this boss and his passives work. So with that being said, what are your ideal options here? Visix. Visix is a champion you get from playing the game for a long time. She's amazing. 100% chance of putting that decreased speed if she's booked ally protection which means she's going to be dying often dropping her stack so you do need a reviver to go along with this and you're definitely not bound to just using void champions void champions are among the rarest they are the rarest champions in the game it's crazy hard to get void shards 
Arbiter's definitely a great idea as a reviver here. It may take some manual work because as we all know, Arbiter has the worst habit of randomly throwing out her revivability because it has a turn meter boost aspect to it which sucks. It really does suck that they put it in the game that way, but it is what it is. So we have Lydia as well, a champion you can get, defense down as well as weaken. We have Mithrala, fantastic champion here. We have damage from poisons. Hex isn't gonna matter too much here. Increase defense, increase attack will help. Removing debuff from ally, here's your cleanser. Strengthen, shield, all great things. Petrification, it is what it is. Also, we get a pretty good resistance buff to this champion, even though, as mentioned, the Reviver would be the ideal champion for any type of resistance. So we have four champions straight out the gate that you don't have to pull. You can pick from them, see what you want. I think the least important champion in the end is going to be Lydia. Yes, defense down weaken is very strong here, but it's not going to be required to kill this boss. You can run this guy, Flubber, like an evil Flubber. I mean, look at him. I mean, the face at least, it's just Flubber. He deals damage, I've used him before. You can't just use him, your team's definitely going to die over time. You definitely need a better damage dealer. I'm not gonna click on Krisk. Krisk, people just don't have him. If you do, that's fantastic, you use him for sure, but he's a very rare champion. Godseeker Aniri is probably, I mean, in my opinion, the best reviver for the Iron Twins, period. I don't think anyone comes close to her because of her passive. If an ally is about to get killed by a fatal hit, preempts that hit and instantly places revive on death on them for one turn before the damage is taken. That's a passive four turn cooldown, then revives an enemy and resets the cooldown on all of their skills. This is fantastic, especially in tandem with someone like a Visix. Visix puts up ally protection, gets that decreased speed on, then she dies. God Secret in area revives her, resets the cooldown, and if you are in a situation where the boss just cleansed all the debuffs and you're just like, I'm in trouble, I have a team full of buff champions, what am I going to do? God Secret in area to the rescue here. So in a team like this, what are you going to do? This is where you can pick and choose between running double reviver or a single reviver, getting rid of Arbiter is an option. You can get rid of Mithral if you want to, then you have to start considering who's going to be your cleanser here. And this is where things open up a lot. I know it's easier to stay on even affinity as far as how the boss passives read. However, it's not going to be the end of the world if you use one or two champions that aren't the same void affinity. I would not go above two. I've done some testing, like I said before, which is why it took so long to make this video. And once you start putting three champions that are a different affinity and they cannot be strong, so this is only applicable to Void, the damage starts scaling crazy at the end and you might have a much lower success rate than the other teams. So with that being said, Golden Rule is going to be keep three Void champions at minimum. Outside of that, based on everything I've told you, you fill in these last two spots wherever you want. If you need a Reviver, you don't have one, Void's probably going to be the heaviest gear check, but the easiest team for you to build overall, simply because you have access to all three affinities and you're not kind of bound by who's only going to be the strong affinity. So those are pretty much every single thought I have on this boss here. I know that was a lot of information. Some people may have to watch this a couple of times. I did my best trying to relay it, my brain sometimes. When I have a lot of information to talk about, sometimes I go too fast, sometimes I repeat things, or I skip ahead and revisit them at a later date. Scattered, definitely the right word. But if you can grasp even 50% of what I was talking about in this video, plus me showing you the examples of what to do, this boss is going to be a cakewalk. I've already heard the end game players say they're kind of disappointed with it because it is so easy. It's true. They they definitely made this. I mean, this is supposed to be the new end game for PVE content. The hardest there is in the game, even superseding Hydra, Doom Tower, all of that good stuff. So it just kind of fell short especially with someone like Geomancer that most endgame players have, just completely stomping this boss in a minute. So that's going to conclude this video. What I want to know is, what five champions are you going to use? Throw some teams. I'm interested to see what you guys are going to use for your teams. Based on what we just talked about here, hopefully this helps you. And as always, if you enjoy this content, smash that like button, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and I will see you all in my next upload.